דוקטור מאיר ג'ובדון פארי ריין לקטור, את רחמן יוניברסיטי, אין בכן בן טלה בלו, סיניור פלו, את פונדיישן פור דפנס אוף דמוקרסיז אין וושינגטון, תודה רבה מאוד, ג'נטלמן, פור ג'וינינג אס. נתחיל בלדבר על הנאומים של היום, הנאומים של הנאומים של סאלח אלן רורי בביירות. מאיר, נתחיל איתך. הוא היה אחד מהאחרונים בבייבים של טהרן, של איראן, של ה-IRGC, שניסים לקולד פרונס, ועכשיו הוא נכון. Of, is out of the scene. What do the Iranians think? They want uh, a revenge? They want a full-scale revenge? What, what will they tell Nasrallah, if at all? Well, I think one of the considerations for Iran is for Nasrallah not to use up all of uh, Iran, the missiles produced by Iran. In other words, not, try not to get into a full-scale war with the Israelis. Because Nasrallah, uh, because Iran needs uh, most of this, the missiles that it has supplied to Lebanon to stay for, in, in order to deter Israel against an attack against Iran's nuclear installations. So I think Iran will be made, we're making sure that if, they, if there is a response by Hezbollah, if and when there will be one, it's going to be measured so, and, and, uh, so that it does not lead to a, to a major war. But um, uh, you have, I, I, I would have to say that one of Iran's biggest concerns right now would be intelligence, uh, intelligence failure. Um, they were very concerned about Sayyid Raziz's assassination in uh, Damascus. They were talking about the Iranians said that a previous effort had been made, but this time they succeeded. The enemy succeeded because of increased uh, intelligence uh, surveillance and success. And in this case also, we have to remember in the all of Beirut, in all of Dahia, a car was spotted by an intelligence service. They knew exactly what time he was leaving the building and he was killed without any civilians around. So this shows a high level of intelligence and I'm sure Iranian and Hezbollah אינטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג'נטליג
So Iran, I think by now, uh, you know, weeks, if not almost three months since October 7, understands the nature uh, of, uh, you know, Israel post-October 7, ever since the commencement of the war and Israel's desire to eradicate Hamas, one of Iran's uh, proxies in Gaza. Uh, Iran understands that it has a limited ability to bring its axis of resistance online, and it's got two fronts going, one political and one economic. And what Iran is doing in both of these fronts is to try to use military means to achieve an economic outcome. And in front one, which is Iraq and Syria, there has been over 115 different attacks uh, in uh, on U.S. positions, on U.S. forces, on U.S. Uh, uh, bases since October 17th, since the acts of resistance started firing in a bid to threaten a wider war so that America restrains or constrains Israel and prevents Israel from attaining its goal, which is the uh, destruction of Hamas. And on front two, with Yemen and the Houthis and more importantly, the Red Sea, after the Houthis entered the fight on October 19th, they failed to strike Israel successfully and directly on land using medium-range ballistic missiles and land attack cruise missiles, as well as suicide drones. So they've shifted to low-hanging fruit and replicated Iran's Persian Gulf strategy in the Red Sea, raising insurance premiums, raising oil rates, decreasing the number of vessels that transit through the Red Sea, and making that a more yes. risky corridor and generating economic concerns to put pressure on America, to put pressure on Israel, to end the war. So using non-military, using military means to generate non-political results. So uh, back to you, Mayor. Uh, looking from the Israeli angle, uh, obviously Iran is busy in giving us hard time in from Lebanon, from Syria, from Iraq, from Yemen, taking advantage of the Palestinian arena. Why Israel is dealing with uh, the octopus uh, hands and not with the octopus itself, meaning attacking in Iran? Well, I think that's a, that's a question Mr. Netanyahu should be answering, to but be honest. But he's not here, and you are. <laughs> I'm the last person who could be, should be here answering on his behalf. Uh, there's not many policies of his that I approve of. Uh, Mr. Netanyahu has made many mistakes. One of them was to leave the Iran nuclear deal. I know my, my I disagree. My dear friend Mr. Behnam disagrees with me. Uh, but another was to abandon the, the octopus doctrine. Iran was very deterred by the octopus doctrine because of the reported attacks uh, in, in Iran, which Mr. Bennett mentioned, and I think the foreign news reports also mention other attacks. But you have, there's another factor here. When the Iran, you know, just like we look at the demonstrations in Iran, women life freedom and say whether the Iranian regime is weak or not, the Iranians look at what's ha what happens in Israel and the demonstrations which resulted as a result of the, uh, as a consequence of the judicial reform sent them, sent them, you know, they, they interpreted it as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to exploit, which why I think one of the reasons why Hamas attacked. And Mayor, Bechnam mentioned earlier uh, the, the nuclear uh, issue, and obviously we've seen Iran uh, raising once again the level of, of enrichment to uh, nearly 60 percent. Should Israel be concerned of that, or are they using the, the fact that we are busy with our war? Uh, what, what exactly is going on in there? You have, I'm very worried about that. I've never been more worried about that until now. In all these years, since 2005, I started researching Iran. Um, number one, they are, I tell you why. Number one, they're closer to the to the bomb, that, to the enrichment required to make a bomb uh, than ever before. Of course, once you have enrichment, it takes you another year to 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 web, you know, to make a uh, to make a nuclear warhead. But nevertheless, they are very close. But another development which really worries me, Yoav, is the fact that we are living in a post-Ukraine world. The Ukraine war was a geopolitical earthquake. In every, you know, when, when there's a physical earthquake, new maps and new, topo new topography features appear on maps, and maps sometimes have to be updated. The same thing happened to geopolitical uh, uh, earthquakes. There are now new geopolitical features on the, on the region on the, uh, in, uh, on, and regarding Russia's calculations. Before the Ukraine war, it was against Russia's interest for Iran to have nuclear weapons. After the Ukraine war, I don't think if Khamenei decides to make a weapon, the Russians would stop him because a nuclear Iran would sap away America's diplomatic and military and even economic resources away 
uh, in, uh, and that would benefit the Russians and the Chinese. So 2024 is going to be a very ch challenging year. We should be ready for the possibility. Again, this is a possibility and a scenario. Nevertheless, it's one that's becoming viable of Ayatollah Khamenei giving the order to make a nuclear weapon. I think another factor that may push him to do that, if, I mean, for that scenario, that what well, makes him more viable is his age. I think yes. he may want to die with the legacy of the man who turned the Islamic Republic into a nuclear state. Yes, uh, Bechnam, your thoughts regarding that uh, nuclear issue? Yeah, I'm inclined to strongly agree with my friend May here. Listen, the Khamenei of today even, and the Guard Corps and the men surrounding him today are not the people uh, of, of the past decade, if not two decades ago. Uh, what the Islamic Republic has witnessed in the past decade, if not two decades ago, uh, is U.S. failure and U.S. shortcomings and U.S. retreats from the Middle East. Uh, you've even had an IRGC official say this when the U.S. left Afghanistan in 2001, that this is not the same America. And so what may have been a penchant for risk aversion before is a penchant for risk tolerance today. When you factor in the fact that the regime is closer than ever, more overtly closer than ever, when it comes to enrichment yes. and advanced centrifuges and deeper facilities, one wonders what they may be closer together, what maybe they may be closer at in terms of covert capabilities. Weaponization is not black and white, yes or no. It's a scale. There's a whole host of activities, and we yes. don't know what they could be doing now or preparing for while the war is going on in the Region Yes, Bechnam Ben Talibloo, Mayor Javed Anfar. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining us today.